against it for now. As Zone has just pushed them closer and closer in. Options running out. They're just trying to find a team that is just caught off guard on the outside of Zone as they get attacked on the other side. It's them who almost gets caught off. I was so worried for a second that Pachala hadn't noticed it. They almost got caught up from behind, but now they were aware of that team. They shouldn't let that be a problem for them. But this next moving zone, but this first moving zone <laughs> is going to be a problem for them. They have to try to figure out where exactly it is they're going to go. And it's a reason because to try and make their pathway. You see, he wants to drop down there, but he's aware of the team below, and that's going to be a problem. Manabuka falls. Thomas has a lot of work to do now. And Janice might fall trying to pick up the body for it. He will. That's huge. That's huge for everybody else to lobby. Reason knows that he cannot go back and try to play hero. Same thing with Thomas HD. For a lot of our heavy hitters in this lobby have found themselves as a solo trying to pick up some very important points because we just got in to that top 25. So there's so many placement points, if not all of them, still left onto the board. So you got to imagine what Thomas HD right now is thinking going up front ahead of everybody else in the zone. But take note, he's not landing on that ultimate low layer. You can see how hard it's going to be. If you are a solo in this lobby, so many players still left in this one. Seti has to do that task as well now. He does still have quite a lot on that, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. As long as he plays his heals, he should be fine. Fury and Lusher, though, eh? popping off here. They've already picked up quite a few eliminations and they're trying to sort out which bits of loot they need, and they're going to get some more eliminations along the way as well. That was a great find at the perfect moment as they're getting smushed into the zone, knowing they're gonna have to sacrifice some heals if they want to stay here with that refresh that's allowing them to go above and beyond, but Lusha gets tagged out. The ODM gear, one of the huge disadvantages when you're trying to rotate through the late game, and you get tagged up, you get dropped down low. Now Fury, just like a, some of the other teams that we've seen into the game up until this point, is just stuck as a solo. The zone's gonna keep on pulling. All their maps are gonna continue to be expended. And you can see Artul up on height. Doesn't really have much people challenging him. But can't speak too soon. There will be players in this lobby that might start to look up now. Yeah, it's not built as high as you normally would in this position. So anybody at a moment's notice can either try to contest it or simply try to build up and steal it away. Kepsi's just going to try to use the kinetic play. And he looks, doesn't like what he sees. Falls right back on down like everybody else. They're slowly but surely chipping away at that high ground while Fury's doing the same thing. Zone's pushing him in. Thomas HD as well. But when you look up, it's the team you'd expect to see there from the very beginning. It's Queasy. It's Venno. I told you, a team would would wait for their moment and their moment came and they did not stop. Queasy and Veno are up above the rest of the lobby in a position we are so, so familiar with. Seti on low ground, a position we're similar to seeing him in, but unfortunately not as a solo, unfortunately not looking for an limb. He needs to try and get back into the zone. It's going to be so, so tough for him though. Fury, similar, similar spot, back side of the zone, praying for an opportunity and Seti might just be an opportunity. Can he connect? He can. Fury with a big shot there and a lifeline in this game. Huge ODM oh. opportunity to try to surprise some teams, but all the solos are getting lost throughout all the action. Into the top five we go. The zone is now beginning to start to close in our 12th moving. Everybody's getting dropped out. Even the players that are left alive are in shambles. No heals, no builds. This one's going to go down to a wire. I don't even know if the zone's going to close this game. The zones have been so, so taxing. They've moved so, so far. All these players running out of match. You can see Chicho, he doesn't really have anything left to work with. Just has his shotgun and he can't hit the shot. And so for and Vino and Queasy, it's so easy. We've seen them in this position win games. And I bet you there's no doubt in their minds how this one's going to close out. They just have to connect the finishing shots, the finishing blows. And that will be it. Game one is won by Queasy and Vino, the team we cannot stop talking about. They just seem to win it. They don't like what they're at in terms of mats, especially if they're one of the teams that time and time again, they go for that high ground. They need to find that refresh, and that's exactly what they're hunting for. He's taking a break there with the Katana. They thought they had a solo, keeps it in, so they went for it, and now looking to maybe blend on a height. Wow. And if you can, Thomas here, Queasy gets taken out, though. It's for Deal who punishes him. But Vino is still up above on height, but how long will that last with Thomas and Malibuka right below? He's hoping it lasts forever. He's hoping they don't even know he's a solo up there, but Thomas and Malibuka, they're one of the teams that is willing to contest, even if Queasy was still alive. But for now, they're just trying to go across the pond into the land where the zone is beginning to pull for Vino. Holding onto the high ground is going to be way and far out of the question unless he's going to use every single resource to make that a possibility. As you see him go towards the front side of the zone, end up in this fight here. He knows resources aren't his strong suit, and that's why he's hunting. Players on the other side, peace control going over. He's not giving up. Finally gets into the box and lands a huge shot, but 
The fight's not over just yet from another angle. He's trying to hold on to these walls. Defensive gameplay coming out for Vino before he attacks yet again. Vino is so, so filthy in these fights. So unpredictable, so hard to read. But now just has to make his way back towards the zone, back towards safety. And he's a good oh. back towards height zone. Wow. He's going to take a trade with him. And it's going to stop Vino for a second. He is going to heal. He did pop the slot, so shields are going up. The big pop will accelerate that process. And now the journey back towards zone. Not going to play for height anymore. It's Zara and Zangi up above. Yeah, this is going to be tough for anybody trying to conserve as many of the resources as possible, especially Yanis and Reason, who are 81 below the damage threshold. But they're playing calm. They're playing cool, collected. And as we jump on for Thomas yet again, it's him without Malapuka trying to put it pedal to the metal and figure out how they're going to be able to get out alive. The slurp will give him a lifeline in this game. He spots the Buell, but isn't going to take the shot. Gingerly waiting for that right timing to heal up a bit more before he looks to connect and fade his way back towards the zone. And he has a way to go. He has to go up over this glacier, up over this cliff. And he's going to use triple kinetic blades just to make sure he gets his way up. Three charges used. Vino, similar, similar job here to be done as well. Yeah, from one solo superstar to another. Even though Cleasy had most of their solo points coming into week number three, this team proving each of them can do it all from IGL to frag when you need it most. Even lands right behind a little bit of a misclick because he slices and dices, but he still finds a crevice of safety. Vino still on a roll. 13 HP, 7 shield, found a nook and a cranny so he can find a moment to stabilize himself. But zone continuously pushing in. That moment is now or never. Yeah, Vino quickly using the match he had just to build up, get out of that congestion and take some time to heal. He's going to have to start moving very, very shortly though. Isn't going to have time for the big but he just needs to get to safety. You don't want to be healing in the back side of the zone. Zara, up on height though, having a bit of problems because it's Vanyak and Kami who are looking to take in. It gets chopped out. Kami's done the damage and now they're looking to try to take height from them. Vanyak's gone down though. And so Zara and Zangi still have hope in this game. They win that fight. And one of the teams that were already in our top five coming into the day, Savino out of nowhere, able to get the knock on the Zara. A huge amount of resources and a second chance at life as he's fighting for that high ground and even beats Kami along the way. He falls down low. This is a roller coaster of emotion that Venno is putting us through. How is Venno staying alive for this long? How has he managed to take out one of the high players? What is Venno doing in this lobby? He has no business up above and now forced down to low where he eventually gets taken out. Taysom, a bad shot there. Trades and not enough damage to stay alive. Mustache has to do the damage all alone as a solo. And moving towards the front of the zone, there will be players, there will be teams on this layer, so he's going to look to build his way back on that. It's going to be hard for Merstash. This is their first game of the day. They missed that first game overall, so now they're trying to make up for lost time. Same thing with Rescar and Hellfire. They went down rather early in game number one, but if you look at the height right now, it's steady, it's Cammy. They find themselves primed in the top spot here. Two eliminations as they're causing so much chaos down below. No materials for this team though, and you see how desperately they're looking for something. Wow. And Cammy will find it. What a shot onto Ref's guard, but it's gonna be the last shot he hits in this game. Can say he do similar, he will. A big one down there. And now a 1v2 situation for Seti. Can he hit the shot? He has hit a couple, but he won't finish one. He gets it. Can he do the 1v1 though? No. no, it's Raya to close it out. Seti almost making the spectacular happen, but Raya was there at the end to secure the victory royale. At a certain point, I have to start saying, look, where can we desperately find some damage? We've seen players make crazy plays before. Now they're going to just try to waltz into a box. So Pablo Ingu, I was going to say, shouldn't have too many problems with this. They are actually forcing him backwards. But unfortunately, their time is now up. It is over and done with. And it's Ref's guard and Hellfire up on height. Pulse rifles in hand. Mythic shotguns in hand. This is a position we wanted to see Malabuka and Thomas in. But no, this time round, it's the Danes, the other Danes, who now have a chance to show us why the best loot in the game right now can lead to victories and to big, big success. And where this zone is going to pull, there's different elevations. It's going to go up a mountain and quickly drop right off. For Hellfire's Ref Guard, this is a perfect recipe for success, but Janice, he gets lost along the way. That was Ref Guard again, putting those overclock pulse rifles to use and taking out a person that needed most, putting so much pressure on the reason here to perform, and he's 40 below the damage threshold. This is cutting. Recall putting resin in a pressure cooker. This is so tough. 
We've seen that so many times this season. I've done it myself. I'm sure you have, Jacob, where you use your katana, you do the right clicks, and then you land the left click by accident. And all of a sudden, now players are shooting you, and you can't even defend yourself. Yeah. And now that leaves Reason all alone. But look up above on height. Ref Scarlet and Hellfire. Ramped all the way up. Ultimate height. Nobody within any sort of distance of them. And now that the zone is closed, this is the time where they have to pressure. They cannot afford any of these teams who are sitting and waiting to look up at them, see where they are and chop them out. Reason though, they're still kicking. It's still going. And that's a nice limb to find. And now he'll start to make his move as that next move in zone kicks in and everybody in the lobby has to go. Went low ground, he gets chopped down there. This is where you typically want to stay away from, but only 14 builds left. Fuse might not have a choice here. Come later on in the game, he uses his first charge of that kinetic blade, trying to find some safety. We're running out of mats. He's trying to look who he can catch off guard. Trulix trying to do the same. More impact points for him as a solo he's trying to pick up. As Deox and Analix, one of the solos left in the game, they find one. A huge refresh for their efforts towards the low ground. You can see they have a great amount of splashes and their slurp juice as well, just in case this does come to heal off. Diox and Andalex tarping their way on through. Diox leading the way. Trulex, he'd want to be leading the way for Chicho, but unfortunately his teammate is down. So it's going to have to be a solo clutch for him. Running very low on Brick, going to have to start using that wood eventually. But again, Hellfire and Rest Guard, nobody challenging them for height. They've conditioned it so well. They've done a good job of spraying the right teams where necessary. And anybody that goes up like we just tried to do, will get sprayed, will get chopped down. Mustache and Tayson might be the only ones who really can give them a challenge for it. Yeah, you notice Hell's Fire towards the high ground. He chopped down some of his builds so nobody could sneak and try to take it from the backside of that zone as it continues to pull. Trulex and Reason under pressure. Reason was able to get one, but he goes down into the top 15. Will Trulex follow him though? It's starting to get really oh. dicey for him down there. He will. That's going to be the end of Trulex's run for Mustache and Tayson though. They are still alive together. And together they are stronger than many of the other teams. Even the likes of Rescon and Hellfire up above with the best loot in the game. These two dropping down to low are going to find themselves in a world of trouble. Order. Solo is going to be coming down this way. They need to be careful. Diox and Andrex have to be careful of Tayson and Mustache though. Because not only are they down on low, they're going to be looking up as well. With one splash less, you see Andalix, what he has in his mind. Do I stagger myself back? Do I go forward? Makes the wrong decision, and it costs him everything. That was Mustache, who was able to find that elimination. Now Vortex is finding one as well. Huge sneaky plays as he takes down Anchor. Now he has a problem in itself. He has to find his way to the zone. He doesn't have any HP to regain. Meanwhile, slow and steady wins the race. Repfire and Hellfire have a smooth sailing, what looks like that top spot. And Tayson's fallen. That leaves Mustache all alone once again, but he's struggling. No material. No way to cover his angles, no way to cover his back. And he's going to be taken out by Wheat and Kuro. And so now a 2v2 in these final moments. Both teams seemingly have enough to try heal off. Hellfire's job is to stop that from happening. Try to use that pulse rifle to his advantage, and it won't quite happen. Wheat, he has a slurp, has some chug splashes. But I think Rest God above has just that bit more. And so it's going to come down all to who has enough heals. This is looking much more like the previous weeks we've seen, Jacob. Yep, I think Revscar, because he had high ground very, very early on in the game, they were able to conserve Matt's resources, campfire. the heals that he's using. He's going back, just like you said, to try to go for the campfire. Wheat with only four splashes left. He's trying to go back and find out where this heal off is coming through at. There's even another slurp juice left for grabs, but Revscar knows there's so much here towards the trailer park from apples. There's corn. Ooh. There's so much for him to grab, but Wheat catches up, just in the a time one tick is all it's gonna take and rap star survives right in that center to take the game enough to put them above is queasy and veto high ground is gonna be theirs for now it's not this tower into the sky that you're used to seeing but it's definitely the start of what their game plan is i like what i see and pressuring zara and zangi will be important because zara and zangi will definitely look to try to take it from them kami has fallen and so it's another game where seti's gonna have to try solo to touch this one out he does have quite the rotation to make, especially with only having two charges in his kinetic blade. It's going to be a difficult one to handle. That's such a long distance to go for this first moving zone. It's not going to be enough to Katana alone. He's going to have to take some breaks and maybe even run across low ground a bit. Flixie and Grappy as well on their way to zone. They've paused here for a moment at the front side as they wait for the zone to catch up. Asa with a big couple of shots. And now he has slow bait to support him. Needs to take a second to heal, though. That was Chicho on the other side of that wall. 
He loses true legs along the way. Said he knows those struggles. He's getting mushed down to the low ground. Even having to stagger to the outside of his own. That's Gripe and Flixay doing the same thing. Said he feeling like he has no other choice. Menmist is going to pop. Thinking, hey, I can outstay my wealth from here. As long as I have more heals. But Gripsy and Flixie on the other side. They even have more heals. Making Seti being one of the first players to go. Menmis not really being used to his most effective because a lot of that storm damage did come in place. He's only going to get 55 effective shield and HP to his name. So, so risky. But up above, it's exactly what I was saying. It was so imperative that Vino and Queasy pressured Zangi and Zara because they would be the ones to try and contest it. Unfortunately for them, they will be successful in that battle. They have high ground right now. So he has fallen. Oh. And Forson's fallen as well. Flixy landing right in his box and connecting with a massive pump shot just to keep them in the game, just to keep them moving. That refresh is going to allow them to keep topping out the rest of their match. You can see that the splashes, he had more than enough. He was able to make it towards that heal off at the end. Comeback and Arthur, they're trying to do the same thing, but heal off isn't necessarily going to be their strong suit because a lot of their heals are being forced out right now. Tayson and Thomas, no eliminations to their name. Missing game one, missing Merstaps as he gets caught just one box behind. This is Fortnite. You fall behind your teammate. Those are the decisions that come to bite you in the very end. But Tayson, one of the best players in the world right now, he can do it. He's run out of mats, but his own pulls back. It gives him a bit more breathing room, a bit more time to plan, a bit more time to think. Vortex and Jacko, though, we have the mythic shotguns, and they're showing us what they can do with it. A kinetic blade there that they'll pick up, and it's Tayson that they've taken out. And now their end game continues. Probably Ringo and Bevies, they're on the front side of the zone. They're just trying to claim space. Make sure that they have safety, they have security, but with just wood left in the tank, you've got to think Bevy's has either got to bring in Matt soon, or they've got to start fighting for them. Yeah, they're one of the teams that need a big weekend as well. They missed out on that opportunity last week, so now it's all on the line. Teeny and Misha, they have that comfortable position on the high ground. They have all that mythic loot as well. So many different variations as Benno is just trying to do enough to contest, dropping them down right into their hands. That could be the recipe for success as well, because if anybody has splashes, it is Benno. Venno, he might even be one of the only ones. This is so good for Venno. Chopped them on height as well, so they couldn't look down on him. They just had to focus on keeping a hold of it. And now he's moving around. Needs to be careful though. Just wood is going to trickle away very, very fast. Dropping down in between builds that aren't his. Needs to be careful of every single angle. He does not own these edits. Zangi's finally fallen. Gold doesn't have anchor with him. And so he's now lurking in the backside. He has a slurp to play with. And needs to hit a shot like that. You can't afford to miss it. Finally, we'll connect onto Artur. Can he play for the finish? Yeah, he might have to try and abandon that one. At least the siphon's going to come through eventually for gold. And it might come through at the right time as Vortex not having that same possibility. Artur's going to go down. It's all going to be shields. He's granted, but he makes a play back to back. Gold goes down. Vortex trying to stay alive. That's his sixth elimination of the game. So continuing to pull forward hasn't closed just yet and neither has anybody's opportunities as all this chaos goes through we're barely getting into the top four as vortex has a solo these are huge points for him and jacko at this stage in the game even find two more eliminations in the past couple of seconds he's trying not to take any more ticks but he's run out he has no heals he needs to connect to some shots will anybody present the opportunity in front of him he's desperately searching he's given up hope there's nobody there bevies is still alive but he knows he has no heal off potential and so it's the buell way in the zone looking for something anything to keep his heal off alive misha's doing the same exact thing both of them with the same amount of heals two chunk splashes just to slurp and he's found the flopper he's found the flopper the buell he must have it surely misha will he find anything i doubt it the men miss comes through as well and there's another one on the ground for the buell he has all the heals in the lobby anything he could possibly ask for and misha's gonna try bandage to stay alive but it's gonna be done it's gonna be over i think so at least wait storm sickness no for a moment i thought the bill was gonna go down to storm sickness that odm gear is so efficient in doing so but as the zone starts to close it's gonna get more and more difficult for flixie to make plays again oh wow as you say that that might have been the sign that they were looking for difficult nah 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 not us as they found ronity he's gonna go down but under pressure from all angles flick say he's gonna get dropped back me as well and they just go down inside of that top 25 they barely got any points for their efforts in terms of placements which means the door is wide open for everybody else to take away yeah, and you can see Jason and mustache they're having such a jolly time they take down thomas hd 
And that is not the first time they've done that. We saw them do that countless times last season when they won their FNCS championship. And now doing it here again in their journey to the next final. Now get some of the loot from that as well. The mats will cap them off. Look at Tayson. 555. 150 builds. It is so, so nice. But this is how Vino went down. I did see them go down in the feed. Queasy went down as well. And it's Teeny who did that damage. Seven of limbs for Teeny in this game. Yeah, another one of those zones that we're talking about goes from 75 to 120 meters. And on the far end where we saw Teeny begin his journey from, it's 150, which shows the impact of these kinetic blades on these new moving zones, forcing everybody to expend everything just to get there. As Reason and Janice, they need a very, very big game in number five to put themselves into that sweet spot in our final game of the day. So going down now is not going to be an option for them. Yeah, and you can see... Janice just trying to rotate around that left side of the zone. There wasn't many players there. There was definitely space for them. That's his lost slow bait, but he does still have a slurp and he will have his HP tick away slowly, but needs to be careful. There are players holding him and he needs to just creep his way on in. The builds are running so, so low. And now we can't even ODM getting chopped out again. Every opportunity just getting pulled out from underneath his feet. But now he gets blessed with a few seconds to try to stabilize himself, pop that slurp juice. Gosh, and Kyrie's gonna get towards that front side of zone, but and sacrifice some HP as they try to hold on to their position. Vortex, two eliminations so far. A very, very impactful player by himself. Can he continue this momentum? Yeah, just making sure to get to the front of the zone before using those heals. And then now he'll patiently wait for things to catch up before moving once again. Teeny on the other side of things. He's looking in the back of the zone for anybody that will give him a chance. He's on a roll right now, seven of limbs. You know he's hitting the shots, but he needs somebody to allow him to do it again. Oh dear, that Augman almost catches him out. Gliding in the sky like that is so, so dangerous when the zone's so small, but he barely stays alive with the pulse rifles from above. He needs to get out of the way. When pulse rifles are looking at you, it's never a good look. Janice now running into the zone because Reason's down. This is it, 108 points. He has the heals, but a fight right in front of him. He might need that refresh for the Siphon to try to stay alive. I've thrown on the other side. Janice is gonna find it, but his splash is gonna be used, but he gets cramped to the Slurp Juice for his effort, but the timing here has to be perfect. Is he gonna get the chance? Only one more tick, and he survives with five HP, but I might've cursed him, because Mustache finishes the job. Tayson and Mustache were waiting in the wings for him to get back inside. Seti and Kami, they're now ramping up towards height. It's Firebro and artists who are up there. They're the ones with the pulse rifles. They're the ones causing all the havoc, but they're the ones with no builds now. They desperately need to find a refresh. They might decide to just take out anybody who goes for height. Teeny is the one that gives it to them. Mustache and Tayson now, down on low ground. We saw them here before. The reason they went down, they didn't make enough space. Can they now re-amend? readjust and win this game. They found some impactful eliminations, but not enough heals or materials to keep themselves going. Same can be said for Seti. He only has six builds to his name, but when it comes to the heals, they have splashes, they have the men miss, and they're using them for both of them to try to keep themselves alive as a duo to the very end, even picking shots at players flying through the sky, trying to get to their heals that they left to the backside of zone. And this is Seti's cami to strike. They're trying to take the high ground. This could be a moment that defines their game. This is such an interesting Interesting play from Seti and Kami. Rarely do we see teams go into the back of the zone to chop. We usually see teams do it from the front side. And so now it's Seti healing in the zone and not enough HP to finally survive those ticks. It's tasting them as Dashto alive. The low ground warriors, the low ground kings in this lobby, clearing out everybody that falls to their layer. And now a chance to heal off, win things out. Tayson, though, wants to win this fight. Doesn't have enough HP, will fall. Mustasto knows he has to get the business done. He's up against fire, bro. And it's only a matter of seconds that will go between them two. Firebro has no heals. Mustache has it all. You've got to think it's going to be that. Firebro looking to try use the pulse over to get in, but it's not going to be enough. Mustache and Tayson finally pick up a game. Who not now, not this stage of the game. We're at the top 26. Placement points haven't even begun to set in. This is the biggest end game of their season. No game has mattered as much as this one for them. They have to have a good game. They need to stay in the top 10 if they want to auto qualify for the grand finals. Otherwise, they put their hands in the mercy of Surge Week. And there are no guarantees when it comes Surge Week. When it comes Storm Surge, who's above, who's not? Trulex and 
Chicho, I say Trulex and Chicho, it's only Trulex left in this game and it's only going to be Trulex left for the remainder. 132 above. Not much materials, but a kinetic blade will definitely make things that much easier for him. Seti and Kami creeping their way over to the dead side of the zone. You see how easy it is to rotate from this side now. Nobody even looking at them, nobody giving them problems and they can get in easy. Janice Reason, easy. Well, that's no longer a possibility as it comes down to our final game. We had a little bit over 80 points coming into this last and final opportunity. Before this game started, 10th place was at 145. They have a huge gap to close, and you got to take into account a lot of those players that are in the top 10 are still left alive. So not only do they need to have a great game to finish this one off, they still need a lot of the lobby to go down quick. They're doing well. The longer they stay alive, the better their chances are. Just need somewhere in the region of the top 20. And they're well on their way to doing that in and around that area. Mustache and Taysen, though, their focus is to get first place. They're not worried about anybody who's trying to qualify for surgery. They just want to do as best as they possibly can. Dennis and Reason now up and over the rest of the lobby, down towards low, down to just wood. It's desperation. It is not going to be an easy finish. But nothing good comes easy. They have to pick up Bloomy, and they will. And they're going to run in for those mats. They desperately need them. Look at the zone. Look at the zone. What a final game that we're going to have. Hopefully you got your ticket for this roller coaster because it's going to go up, down a lot of these mountains, open waters. This is going to be hard for some of these players, but for Trulex, for him and Chicho, it's Trulex who has been picking up a lot of these points as a solo. There's still a lot of confidence left on the team overall. Zara lost Zangi long ago in this fight, and he's fighting for anything that he can get his hands on in terms of materials. He has seven left that he can place, and he has two, two zones still to go through. Praying for a zone pullback, and that's not what he'll get, but he still stays in this game. Queasy and Vino finally back up on the height. Will this be their second win of the day? Come in, City of Fallen. And so the window certainly is open for Taysen and the Mustache to try and take first place. So many points just got picked up through placement right now, and there's still so many left on the board for teams like Gold and Anchor to try to pick up the pace here, get that top spot, punch their ticket to either Surge Week or the finals. Octor and Combat trying to do the same thing for them. Everybody neck and neck in terms of placements, but Janice goes down! Janice gets lost! It's all up to Reason here! That is a huge amount of pressure to put on one person. Reason in the zone! Oh, no! Purple ticks away! But I think that will be fine. 142 points should put them somewhere in the top 15. You've got to think, will it be enough to keep them in? Will it be enough to allow their season to continue? For the rest of this lobby, though, as the game continues, this Mustache and Tayson up on second night, and Queasy and Vino have been chopped. They will have the kinetic blades to stay up and above. And unfortunately, nobody really going to be able to take height like that. But Mustache and Tayson, they will persist. They will continue. They will try and chop. And maybe they'll find some success. But Queasy's going to have something to say about it. A big shot to stop Mustache. They saw that one coming from a mile away. And they acted so quickly to save the day. Oh, Tayson flying through, landing a monster of a shot, but no builds left to his name. So he's got to do this with very little. And he goes a huge tag, but Andalex gets the last lap. Vox now takes down Slove. So this is coming down to our final five teams as Vox fighting for his life with only 10 HP. He needs that one to stay alive, and he gets dropped by Hizix. They couldn't get up the hill. So many of these players running out of materials, and for Hizix, he's running out of HP. It doesn't matter if he has the match. Golden Anchor, now one of the remaining teams, the only duo left in this one. Oh no, it's Queasy and Vino up above. They're still alive together. And that's going to be a big, big problem for Gold and Anchor. Anchor's fallen now at the hands of Queasy. And Gold just has this one splash left. He needs to try to find some heals. He needs to connect through that shot. And he will. Oh my goodness, Gold might have just done it. Will he be able to out heal against Diox? Oh no, Diox has so many splashes. And Gold doesn't have anything to his name. It's going to be the end. It's going to be Diox. It's going to be Andalex that pick up game number six. He says these six games, wherever duos place on this board, will put points on our series point leaderboard. Seti, Cami, well, we already know they're going to grand finals. <laughs> Where it's fine, no one had.